Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today I am going to start a video I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I got this idea a couple months back, so I've slowly been kind of gathering the things that I want to use for it. I'm not the craftiest of people. I feel like I'm creative, but like the execution of things isn't always the best. So I'm not exactly sure what I've gotten myself into, but for this video, I want to put together a lace gown. I know. If you are a photographer or you've had photos taken and you've kind of been immersed in Pinterest or Instagram, you always see these beautiful boho-y lace and fringe gowns and they are amazing. I have definitely photographed my fair share of them and I have tons of friends who have. The problem is, at least for me, I am kind of cheap. Not. I definitely appreciate quality and again I have photographed these very expensive lace dresses. They're very heavy, they are very well made, they are I'm not saying you should never spend money on good dresses. I own a few that I've spent quite a bit of money on, but I really want another one and I don't want to pay for it. I want to make one myself. I want to see if I can. So the first thing is these dresses, most of the time, if they are made correctly, are made out of what they are calling vintage lace. What these are is usually a lace tablecloth, some kind of Quaker tablecloth that, I'm not sure where everybody gets them, but my idea was just to go to the thrift stores and see what I could gather that was lace and pretty because I honestly didn't care. I don't care if if it's vintage, I really just want to make something that photographs well and see like almost like what the least amount of money that I can spend on this. So I went to our local savers. I did end up finding, I was very surprised. So like I said, I've kind of collected these items over the last few weeks, like when I got the idea that I was going to try to make one of these dresses myself, I did find quite a few really cool things. Let me show you. So this is the lace. You see? Looks familiar, don't it? So this one's very yellow, but it has like all the detail and the finishing on the edges. It's absolutely beautiful. It's, it's heavy, but it's still lightweight like it's gonna feel like a really nice dress so I have this one so I do have this one also can't see this one's also this one's also a little bit more on the um, yellowy side and it's also woven a little bit more it looks almost like a teeny tiny crochet but still lightweight rather than like a lace but that's the second one we got. This one, probably my favorite and definitely the heaviest, is this one and it's on the wider side. And it's got the super cute finished edges. So I know they do these a lot in like vintage, these little, um, these little tabs. I know they do that a lot on like vintage tablecloths or this style of tablecloth. What are those for? What are those little tabs for? Are they, if you know, <laughs> let me know in the comments, but I have no idea, no clue what those little tabs are for. But they seem to be on a lot of these like lace pieces. Again, let me know. But yeah, this is super pretty. There's parts of it that are a lot more sheer than others. That's like an edge. And then there's these other like thicker parts. I don't know, beautiful. And then you can see the difference in that one that I just showed you and this first one. You can see like the color varies quite a bit in the yellow and the white. So that's kind of where I think I'm gonna run into an issue is matching the fabrics and this one's definitely a lighter a lighter one also it's lighter in color and in weight it does not weigh anything at all hardly but this one's also very pretty and very open it's got like a really pretty i don't know if you can tell it's got like a little scallop 
a little scallop edge on there. It's beautiful. And it's also very, very white. So I have two yellow and two white. And then I did find this one also, but it's very open. Like it's, I don't know. I know a lot of the lace dresses don't have linings in them, but I feel like you'd just be showing everyone everything you had if you were wearing only this. And it's also very yellow. So those five, the best part about those five items, I did get them all from Savers and they were all $5 each. I have five beautiful lace tablecloths and a dream and we're gonna see where we end up. So right now, the budget on supplies is $25. I, I have a sewing machine, but I don't know if I wanna use the sewing machine. I think I wanna hand sew it. But the reason I want to hand sew it is because I know everybody doesn't have a sewing machine. So I wanted to make it super easy where you can run and find some tablecloths or shoot, you could go to Joann's or a fabric store, wherever, and just find some lace that you like. And it doesn't have to be like tablecloths or whatever, just finding some lace that you like to make a really pretty dress that photographs well, but you don't need to buy a sewing machine. So I think I'm not going to use a sewing machine. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if that's even possible. We'll see. Again, this is like day one of probably a week, a week process. Bye for now. Okay, welcome back. Today is technically day three. Um, I didn't film yesterday, but yesterday I would consider day two of this project. I went to Savers one more time to see if I could find any other tablecloths. I found nothing, so I'm going to work with what I have. I love what I have, I just really wanted to double check and see if they had anything maybe that matched a little better, but fine, totally fine, we're gonna work with what we have. And then I also went to Walmart to get like the little odds and ends that I needed. We do not have any big craft stores here, we don't have Hobby Lobby, we don't have Michaels, we don't have Joann's. We don't have anything. There's a few little small craft stores, but I never make it over to them. There's not really any near me. So Walmart it is. Walmart has a nice little sewing section. It is what it is. You got to work with what you got. So at Walmart, I got um, thread. It's kind of like a creamy white color. So whichever tablecloths I had decided to use, um, it would match. I got safety pins, and the reason that I got safety pins is because I'm pretty sure that I have some straight pins around here somewhere, like the normal ones you use for sewing, but I cannot find them. Also because I don't have any friends and I don't have anybody to pin this dress to, so I think I might end up having to pin it to myself, and I would rather not have a bunch of straight pins everywhere, and I just figured safety pins would be a little more sturdy while I kind of pinned and checked to see how how it was gonna work. So, just a little, a little better. I got needles, I already had, I got kind of some big fat chunky ones. I already had some needles, but they were teeny, 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 tiny. And I kind of, with what we're, what I'm about to do, I would rather have like a big needle I can keep my eye on, because we're gonna be working with a lot of fabric. And then I got this, um, it's cordage, I guess. It's like a cotton cording, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. It's like a cotton cording and I got it to be like the ties in the back. So we'll need one tie for the waist and probably one or two for the back of it to kind of like tighten it up the back. I also, so they only had this in white. They didn't have it in any other color. So I have decided that I'm going to use the white tablecloths, the two white ones that I have for this. So this is going to be great, but if I was going to use the yellow ones, I would probably figure out a way to like make this not white, whether it be soaking it in like a coffee or a tea or something to make it just, even if it didn't match perfectly, these super white strings on like the yellowy creamy colored fabric would have looked weird. So we're going with the white anyway, so this is going to be great. Um, all that stuff at Walmart cost me about give or take $13, and we're also not gonna use all of it. I'm not gonna use all the thread, I'm not gonna use all the twine, but total for everything was about $13. So that puts our total, $10 for the tablecloths and $13 for the supplies at Walmart. We are looking at about $23. So that's the budget for this dress. That is what this dress is costing us, unless I run into anything and I feel like I need to get anything else, which of course I'll keep you updated, but for now, 
we are at $23. So today being day three, today is sewing day. Yay! I'm even standing up right now and not sitting down because I'm very anxious to cut up this beautiful fabric. Not even gonna lie to you. The idea of cutting into this fabric makes me nervous because they are beautiful. So one is gonna be used for the skirt, one of the white pieces, and then the other one I'll have to chop up and use for the sleeves. And that's what makes me nervous because it's this big giant piece of lace that's just gorgeous and it could actually make another skirt. It's perfect size for another skirt, but it's the only one that matches so I have to cut it up and make it into the sleeves and I'm very sad about that. I guess if I make another one, it can be sleeves for another one also, but we'll see. So I'm waiting for my kid to get done with her schoolwork downstairs and then we will, because I kind of need to take over the floor I think downstairs to make this work. So once she's done, we will go ahead and get started on the sewing. Find the center, I found the center, and then I think I want to do a 22 inch across so it makes it up to 44 inches for the waist. I really want to make sure that it fits everyone. So I've measured, we put 11 at the center here, and I'm going to make a mark. the center is and then we're gonna make a mark down here so I know where that is then I'm gonna make a mark down here where that is okay so we have the marks can't really see them but they're there circumference 44 inches so 22 across so I think what I'm gonna do is half of 22 is 11 that's right <laughs> half of 22 is 11 because I think so the sleeves I'm trying to think so each sleeve will have to be half of the front and the back so it would be 11 but like I want flowy so I think I'm gonna go with an extra inch on each side Maybe an extra inch and a half on each side. So I think I'm gonna make these panels for the sleeves like 14 inches wide. And I'm not sure how long yet. I'm gonna have to like put it on and like pin it. But I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna go 15, 14 or 15 inches wide. I'll let you know what I decide. But from there I will figure out the sleeves. The sleeves are really like the skirt was easy. Like that's hey, put a hole in a tablecloth, you have a skirt. But the sleeves are going to be the thing. So I'll keep you posted on what I decide. Okay. 
Okay, so, whoop. Hold on, you're falling off the tripod. Okay, so we are pinned. Let me show you here. So I pinned it all the way across, like in the front where I'm going to sew it. Cause I wanna get everything, everything pinned. So it's all pinned up in the front. So I'm gonna pin it in the back also and see where we end up. Okay, and now I have like the back pinned a little bit. Um, I just have a few on there. I don't really know. I know I need to leave room for it to be adjustable. So I'm gonna try it on now and see what we're working with. Okay, so this is where I'm at. I have all of the pins in here. I'm gonna try to show you the back. I can't see if you can see the back. Super open, there'll be the adjustable strap right here. So the only issue that I'm running into at the moment is this right here is <laughs> supposed to be the center. So it's supposed to be right here. So I pinned everything crooked. But you know, that's the first, that's the first like mess up that I've had. But yeah, so I just need to repin it. But like the sleeve length is good. Um, this one's not fraying like the other lace was on the edges. I don't know if you can see. It's not fraying. Like I'll probably end up finishing it just to make sure it doesn't fray. But it's not like I don't have to worry about it right this second. Like I don't have to stop and fix that like I had to the skirt but yeah we have to move this <laughs> we have to move this center seam over here and re pin the sleeves and then I think you can sew it I left these little I left these little guys I put the little um, the little scalloping in the front and again this will probably be closed I don't know if I'm gonna pin it up so high I think it'll probably be like that I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. For right now, we have to re-pin it because it's a little crazy. Okay, see I'm a dummy. It even had a red mark still from where I marked the center when I originally cut the skirt. So I have now pinned it to the middle, nice and lined up. So I need to re-pin the front. I think we're good. Okay, so my fingers hurt from using safety pins. The Dodgers game is tied. So I think I'm gonna end this for now. I'm gonna end this on day three and I'm gonna probably finish it tomorrow. My back hurts from sitting on the floor. But yeah, it looks good. So hopefully I can finish this tomorrow and then I can take pictures of it next week. It's gonna be so exciting. I'm very excited. It's turned out way better than I thought. It's beautiful. Okay, I will see you tomorrow. Hello friends, today is day four of the dress saga. Um, there's two changes that I would like to point out first before we get started. The first change is I do think I am going to cut new pieces for the sleeves. I think I want them to be longer. When I tried it on, they kind of came to here and then I ordered some fringe that's gonna make them a little longer. But I really think I want like super like flowy, beautiful sleeves. So I think I'm gonna make that change. So I just have to cut new sleeves and the sleeves we cut haven't been sewn to anything yet. So I'll just use them for another dress. I do wanna see if I can turn um, some of the other fabric into like a little dress for my daughter. And the second change that I'm going to make, hold please. I think I am going to use the sewing machine. Hear me out though. Um, I can finish this by hand and if you are going to try to make a dress like this you absolutely can do it by hand the reason I am NOT going to finish it by hand is because I really need to get it done and I also already have my sewing machine out because I'm fixing uh, my daughter's Halloween costume it needed to be that like a hem needed to be fixed and I needed to like lift the waist because it was a little too long for her so I already had it out it's very tempting. I am going to finish it with the sewing machine. I'm sorry. But that is going to 
make me be able to do it so much faster. So if you have a sewing machine, use it. If you don't, this can absolutely be done by hand. It's such a super simple pattern and a super, super simple, like kind of way to make a dress that you can do it by hand. So don't think that I lied to you and that you can't. I just right now do not have the time. It would take probably another three days for me to finish this dress if I used, if I did it by hand because I just don't have a lot of time and I need to get it photographed also. So yeah, I am going to use the sewing machine, but again, you don't have to. Okay, so I have sewing machine all set up and now I am going to uh, take the sleeve and the first part of the sleeve I'm going to close up. And the reason I'm gonna do that, I just think it's gonna be a little more secure if I fold that in and sew it first and then sew the two sewn pieces together, if that makes sense. So like how we sewed and we finished the edge of the skirt, um, or the, it's the waist, uh, we finished the edge of the waist. So then it just will make it a little sturdier, I think. So we're gonna do that. I have finished the edges of the sleeves. I finished all the edges all the way around just to make sure nothing frays. It's not like super amazing, but they're pretty much all gonna be hidden, so it doesn't really matter, but that's where we're at. The next thing that I have to do is attach the sleeves. So I have to attach the sleeves to the skirt. I'm gonna make sure they're lined up this time and we're gonna go from there. I really just wanna attach the front. I don't really, I think I'm gonna have to measure. I think they might be too long, but I did that on purpose just to make sure there was enough. I'd rather them be too long and have to just fold them in or cut them off a little bit. But yeah, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna pin them and then sew on the front part of the sleeves. Okay, so this is where we are at. The sleeves are sewn to the front of the dress. So exciting. Um, what I did, I went over it with one stitch just to kind of secure it, and then I went over with a zigzag stitch just to like really lock everything in. I do think I'm gonna change this though. This right here, I think this is too, I think how much I sewed that up is a little too high. I don't know, I haven't decided. So now I have to figure out how to secure the dress to the sleeves to the back. We'll see. Okay, so excuse me, I'm in my daughter's room because she is back downstairs with the big mirror on a class call. So I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be down there dancing around in a dress and her classmates think I'm a weirdo. So. We're here with Mr. Giraffe, and this is what we have so far. So I have the sleeves pinned. I just, I don't know if I can show you the back. So I just have it like clipped in the back, but that's the way the sleeves go. They're like super, super flowy. Um, I do just have them pinned. I need to sew them on, and then I need to figure out a tie. And I think we're done. It just, it looks a little wonky up here, but I really just think that's because of the way that I have it pinned in the back. But we should be good to go really soon. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Okay, so after exactly one million hours of sewing, this is where we are at. We are pretty much done. Um, other than, like I said, I want to add fringe. I have to go and cut off, cut off all these little strings. And I also, the only thing I need to do is add the string to the back, add the tie. And then I will try it on and see what we think. It's definitely not perfect, but it's mine. Hey guys, 
what's up today is I guess officially day four of working on this dress it's been a few days in between I had ordered some fringe for the sleeves on Amazon it's not going to get here in time it still said even though I ordered it a week ago it still says I wasn't gonna be here until Saturday but I am photographing this dress tomorrow so I needed to run all over town and find some fringe so what I found was this you see it I'm focus okay this is what I found I'm sure that they're meant for like curtains or something I'm not really sure but it's very pretty the detailing is pretty fabulous so I'm going to put that on the sleeves like that it's going to be it's going to be great I did get nine feet I got three yards of it because like a dummy I went on a hunt for French for the sleeves but I did, did not measure sorry my hair is wet I did not measure before I left so I'm sitting in the store trying to picture how long these sleeves are to do them all the way around the edge with this fringe so I just got I think I think it there's no way that it's more than three feet per sleeve but you know I would rather have too much than not enough but for the three yards of that it cost me about $15 it was about $5 a yard so depending on how much we use I will update the total of what the dress cost. Okay, so I'm gonna sew that on now and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so I have the fringe on one of the sleeves. It's so pretty. Let's see how it lays once I get the other one on. Okay, so funny story. I didn't buy enough fringe. I'm off on each sleeve about three inches. Um, so like another half a foot would have been more ideal. However, the part that's not going to get the fringe is like just kind of right under the armpit. Like it's not going to be noticeable, but again, my mistake, I should have measured before I went to get fringe. The sleeves were much bigger than I thought they were. Okay. It's all done. There's the sleeves. I added a tie. I added a tie to the back. You can see my bra, but that's kind of usual with these types of dresses. I left tons and tons of room. I wanted it to be for maternity. See, one of the other ones that I have that I bought is kind of a smaller size, so it doesn't work for that but yeah all right all right we're gonna photograph it tomorrow I will see you tomorrow for day day six but the final day bye My hair is always clean <laughs> in your eyes um, okay so final thoughts I love how the dress turned out you saw the photos it's absolutely beautiful um, total cost was after the fringe and like I said I had to use all of the fringe total cost was about $38 
So that's kind of amazing. I'm um, definitely not promising that you can make a dress the same for the same price. Like I said, I thrifted the fabric, but I think it was really cool. I think it turned out great. I love that it's mine and I made it and it didn't cost me a whole bunch of money. Do I think that you should only make dresses and never buy them? No, I think if you have the money to buy the dresses, already made from artists who create these, who put their heart and soul into them, absolutely. Am I going to make more dresses to go in my client closet? Probably, now that I've realized that it's pretty simple. And it's not really something that, it's definitely not something I've done very often in my life. It's always been interested. I've always watched like the like Project Runway shows and thought, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I could just like throw something together like that. So I don't know, maybe I have sparked a new interest and we will see in the future. So if I decide to do anything else, I will of course bring you along. If you have made it this far in my video, I know this is a very long video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked it. I think you did if you made it this far, but as always, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you can follow me on all of my other adventures, and I will see you next time. Bye!